therapy, correct? I had, uh, well, you know, I always wrote, like, uh, from when I was two. <laughs> um, and I always loved to, I, I loved to write. I wrote all the time. Um, but I, the only time I had been printed was when I would write, like, little record reviews for hardcore magazines, like Flipside and Maximum Rock and Roll. <laughs> And, uh, but then when I was 16, I started my own fanzine called Dirt, um, it was awful. <laughs> it was a mixture of, um, some local punk bands or, uh, like death metal bands and, and some politics. I interviewed Abby Hoffman and, um, oh, cool. yeah, and, uh some libertarians and uh, uh, had some art, like, you know, angsty teenage drawings. <laughs> so dirt transitioned into roller derby? No, then I stopped d dirt um, when I was like uh, 17 and then I started getting more uh, into writing really dark, gothy stories and nobody wanted them. Nobody. My mother cried. <laughs> and, and then I uh, moved to California all alone and then I moved back to New Hampshire and then I moved to Philadelphia and then I married Costas and we moved to France and um, I was doing shows and then uh, I was doing shows all the time and I was getting really hurt and I was drinking all too much and, and getting hurt that way and um, having many, many affairs at the same time and getting <laughs> hurt. I was just beating myself to death and then um, I, I couldn't take it anymore when I was about 22. I took about four years of it and then I, uh, I knew that I was gonna die or else like be unattractive. And so I, I, um, I moved back to New Hampshire and got a, a little attic room with um, Bill Callahan from Smog and gave up the, all the outside life and we were really getting into um, Zen Buddhism cones and, um, and we were doing paintings all the time. A bunch of paintings every day and taking really really long walks on the railroad tracks and he didn't talk so, <laughs> so it was a really really quiet time it was really beautiful and uh, then out of that um, and I had been writing like always but suddenly I had all this energy that I had before been putting into uh, show, you know, touring all over Europe and America and putting a lot of energy into my love life. It was, it really took a lot of energy. People might not know this <laughs> about swingers. And, and, uh, and I was also in, you know, a really dramatic relationship with my husband where I just loved him too much and wanted to kill him. So, I mean, really wanted it. not. You know how people say I wanted to kill him. No, I really I thought about it in detail all the time because I just uh, I had to have him. So, but with Bill, it was really quiet and peaceful, and I had so I had all this energy because I was a really energetic person, and and it wasn't going anywhere, and it was just kind of it was just kind of like like buzzing in my in my chest and my brain in a not unpleasant fashion. And out of that, I suddenly started writing these whole essays, and like on on killing yourself, or on when I was a prostitute, or on um, white trash, or um, I mean how I admired my neighbors and who I who I grew up with. I wasn't making fun of anyone, and and then I just started just putting those out along with interviews, and I was really interested interested in noise music or experimental music of any kind and I just somehow seemed to know everybody probably from touring and so um, I was able to get all these interviews and it was also a really 
uh, to use Anais Nin's worst world word in the world, um, it was a fecund time. <laughs> so everybody was, you know, available to be interviewed. Everybody had interesting things to say. I was also interviewing my mother, my neighbors, my, my, you know, uh, street people, um, people who worked in all kinds of unsavory industries, and uh, and I was doing a lot of, like. Bill and I did record cover reviews instead of record reviews, and mm -hmm. you know, and we did stuff like that, and and so it was just a, it just, it was just a reflection of the time, and and then I started going to um, New York all the time, and then I started writing about that, and that was a whole exciting scene in the '90s, and so that was that was roller derby. It was everything that was going on, and the underground, I guess, and yeah, did I answer you? <laughs> well, and it grew over time because you started to get some advertisers and it started to get a little longer as far as page page length. Yes, it became like a real magazine in that, you know, it was, you knew, I would I would get subscriptions, people knew it was coming, it was coming like every two, two months and, and um, People knew that it was coming and it was a really good way to let people know what was going on because back then we didn't have the internet and uh, people needed to know what was what was happening out in the world you know you're stuck in Kansas what are you gonna do you didn't have any internet I mean people who today have no way of knowing how isolated you were back then and fanzines meant everything to us like you know me in, in Rochester I, I was fine with my weirdo railroad track life <laughs> but yeah. but to hear about things that were going on in Japan and 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 you know Los Angeles or you know or or Germany it was um, it made me feel okay like to know that there were people out there who were actually doing things that meant something to me in my heart you know meant like meant real life to me because all I was getting the message that I was getting was that what was real was to go to college, get your degree, get a career, marry somebody who's not insane, and um, have a child, get a mortgage, um, vote, have a car. I didn't have any of those things, and uh, and I I was being told by any ever everybody you know functioning in my life that I was nowhere. I was lost. I was doing everything wrong. And then when I would read fanzines or I would meet these people, I was told, you know, you're 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 right. They're crazy. You're right. And and that that's that saved my soul. <laughs> and and so many other people's too. And we were right. A lot of us went on, a lot of us went on to you know kill ourselves. But the the ones who didn't, um, a lot of people went on to become you know main fairly mainstream, you know, able to take care of themselves doing what they loved and, and making the world better for a few weirdos out there. So fuck you all. <laughs> um, so when you decided to end it, um, was that because you wanted to focus on um, books and more paid writing or you just it just was a time thing. You just couldn't put as much time in it, into it as you wanted to. I ended it exactly 10 years and 25 issues after it began, which satisfied the OCD in me. But also, I had really done the underground thing at, to, as exactly as far and as much and as deep as I wanted to. And at that time, I married somebody who was um, Catholic, old, old world mentality. Uh, had a, a a normal job, and um, I wanted to try out the middle class life. I wanted to own a house. I wanted to have um, a stable life for my kids. I wanted to. I was starting to get paid a lot for writing. This was the one and only time in my life when I was making you know fifty thousand dollars a year. I can't even believe that now. <laughs> and um, and I just I wanted to like. I, we had dinner parties. We had a dining room. We, you know, we had um, friends who didn't know what we really thought. 
we, you know, and I, I really wanted to, you know, dive as deep into the middle class life as I had into the underworld. And that lasted a couple of years, and it was interesting, but that was really why I quit roller derby, because I was done with that period in my life. And then I did, I did uh, write more books after that. But even while roller derby was going on, I wrote a couple, I wrote two or three books, but um, they were sort of, they were almost like really long versions of roller derby. <laughs> yep. And and then after that, I, um, I started feeling like books was really what I did. And I was also writing a ton of articles for newspapers, magazines, and uh, sites, and doing advice columns, and doing all kinds of things like a real professional paid writer, and I really wanted to try that out, and I did, and I, I don't like that anymore, I didn't, uh, but I enjoyed it for a while, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed um, making, like trying, or hanging on to who I was, which, which is kind of an unusual person, but making it fit into the format so that it's not gonna stick out like a, like a, like a hideous lump in their in their what they've established as their voice. Yeah. So it was a really uh, neat balancing act for me. And now I don't do that. And uh, I don't know if it's because they're not asking or I started saying no. <laughs> it was probably a combination. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to try it and see if I could do that life, you know, if I could be a successful person. Right. I think I was, but it, it wasn't nearly as interesting as being, as doing everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> do you miss it at all, or do you feel like... Miss what? Do, well, miss the roller derby era of, you know, telling the stories of the people and stuff. Yes, um, it was such an unlonely feeling to every day be asking hyper intimate questions of strangers, friends, you know, like you don't really ask your friends really what they really think and feel and do and, you know, things like what they uh, picture when they masturbate, like that's really, you, I, you, you don't do that normally and I feel like I really got to know people really well through that and I'm, I'm kind of I, I guess it's, it's it's actually not even true anymore to say I'm awkward socially but I'm just uh, I don't know I don't really know how to relate to people without um, an intermediary without without a magazine or a project or or working together or um, and so it, it was really an unlonely time. It was a time when I felt like I um, fit in with the humans the most out of my life. So I do miss I do miss that. And and it was always interesting. I'm really interested in people. I'm really interested in what they're really like inside that they don't tell people normally in normal life. And, and I don't really get very much of that anymore because I'm not asking. Because <laughs> right. I don't have an excuse to. 